A very good afternoon to one and all present here. Welcome to day three of Aussie's Conclave 4.0. We hope uh, you are excited to know all about construction industry occupations, courses, and PR pathway. Now let's meet our presenters for today. First, we have Prasamsa Shakya. She has an extensive career spanning over half a decade in education and migration sector. Next, we have Mr. Path Patel. He is a director at Aussie's Group Hawthorne. Next, we have is Bhomik Patel, a seasoned migration agent, brings years of expertise in both education and migration fields. Lastly, we have Mr. Sanjeev Insan, who brings over three years of experience as a registered migration agent. That's all from my folks. Relax and enjoy the session. You are in good hands. I would like to call upon Ms. Prashansa. Uh, hello everyone, welcome to this live session. So today in this live session, we'll be discussing about the construction industry. So thank you Advait for the wonderful introduction. So I am Prasam Shakya. I've been working in Aussie's group for the last five years. I'm, and I'm a qualified education counselor here in Aussie's group Adelaide. So today I'll be providing you the information about the construction courses available here in Australia, which will lead you to a uh, skilled migration you know, pathway in Australia. So just to begin with, uh, why study construction related courses? So Australia's construction industry is booming, leading to high demand of skilled workers. And then um, this ensures excellent job security and abundant uh, employment opportunity for graduates. So Australian institutes offer top quality education combining rigorous academic training with practical experience. And then of course, after completion of this study, if the course is in the um, medium and long-term skill lease, you'll be able to apply for post-study work rights, which will allow the graduate to uh, gain valuable experience and enhancing their career prospect. And additionally, studying construction can be a pathway to permanent residency. Um, permanent residency and yet skilled migration programs. So um, construction sector offers attractive competitive pay as well, making it a lucrative career choice. Strong industry connection um, provides networking opportunity, internship, exposure to real world projects, aiding in job placements. Advanced technology in Australia, construction industry, uh, ensures students are trained in modern practices making them competitive globally. And Australian qualifications are inter internationally recognized and allowing graduate to pursue career worldwide. So moving forward, um, we've got construction related courses uh, focusing on vocational education. So we've got uh, certificate three in building and construction, carpentry course, painting and decoration, wall and floor tiling, roof and tiler, advanced diploma of civil construction design, associate degree in civil construction and in structural engineering specialization in design drafting. And the higher education for related courses would be bachelor's of engineering, civil and construction, bachelor's of construction management, master's of construction management, master's of global project management, and can be masters of um, business administration, specialization in project management. So to get into these courses, you need to meet certain entry requirements. So vocational education, starting from certificate three, the minimum criteria to uh, start the course or to meet the entry requirement for the course would be, you must have completed year 12, which is equivalent to Australian qualification. And for English requirement, you need to have IELTS overall 5.5 or equivalent. For certificate four, some courses would usually have prerequisite of certificate three and must have minimum year 12 or equivalent minimum english level same as in like uh, certificate three ielts overall 5.5 or equivalent and then for diploma course academic qualification it will still be year 12 or if you have completed any certificate three or four you'll still be eligible to enroll for diploma and minimum english requirement will be ielts 5.5 or equivalent we do have advanced diploma and associate degree so usually there will be a prerequisite of diploma or certificate three courses for this one and then the minimum requirement still remains same overall 5.5 uh, each one not less than five in each component or equivalent and if the student have completed in any Australian ACAF level certificates or higher English requirement may be exempted. And following with the higher education um, entry requirements for bachelor's degree, you must have completed year 12 or equivalent. And the English requirement for bachelor's degree will be a little bit higher than 
vocational courses. So that will be IELTS overall six or equivalent. And for master's degree, the education or academic uh, requirement will be must complete bachelor's degree or equivalent. And then the minimum English requirement will be IELTS overall 6.5, each man not less than six. So the fee structure, we do have numbers of education providers which offer all these uh, courses related to construction in construction uh, industry, such as carpentry. The monthly intake will be minimum 24,000, ranges to 34. Uh, so all these education providers who offer these courses, they are also offering promotional fee structures as well. So we've got painting and decoration, minimum uh, fee would be 22,000 to 36. Bricklaying and rock laying, that will be twenty-four to thirty-six thousand uh, dollars. Fabrication and welding, thirty-four thousand to twenty-six thousand. Wall and floor tiling, twenty-four thousand to thirty thousand. Civil construction, twenty-two thousand to thirty thousand. Architecture, so that will be twenty-five thousand to thirty-five thousand per year because that architecture will be for bachelors of architecture and construction project management, which is in master's degree. So 25,000 to 45,000 per year, depending on the education provider. So as I've already mentioned that there are lots of education providers which is offering this courses. They are flexible with the payment plans and all. And also they are offering some promotional fee structures also. So moving ahead, the career outcome after completion of all these uh, degrees, if you've studied carpentry, you will be working as a carpenter, which is as a skilled nomination uh, lease. So your occupation list will be occupation after completion of the study will be carpenter, painting and decoration, painting, trade worker, bricklaying and rockling, it will be bricklayer, fabrication and welding, metal fabricator or welder, wall and floor tiling, wall and floor tiler, civil construction design, you'll be working as a civil engineering draft person, architect, architectural draft person, construction and project management, you'll be able to work as a construction project management or quantity surveyor. So looking at the future employment perspective, um, as per the job and skill Australia website, you know, all these uh, future outcome or the career outcome that we have. It is listed in a short um, skill shortest list. So as in like trading, painting, trade workers, civil engineering, it is counted as a shortage skill manpower here in Australia. So carpenters are in high demand due to ongoing residential and commercial projects, ensuring strong job prospect. Painting trade workers also have steady demand driven by new construction and renovation projects. Uh, particularly in home improve, improvement and commercial refurbishment. Similarly, bricklayers will also uh, be in robust demand with population growth and urban expansion, fueling uh, residential and commercial developments. So metal fabricator and welders are also short for across uh, construction, manufacturing and mining sectors due to expanding infrastructural and industrial activities going on in Australia. Well, uh, sorry, wa uh, wall and floor tile are all, uh, will also grow in demand, driven by housing development and trend towards high quality interior finishes. So as per the, you know, the list, so all the occupation after completion of construction uh, courses is highly in demand. So it's similarly, like construction and project managers and quantity surveyors enjoy excellent um, career prospect due to the need of skill planning and management in large scale infrastructure and commercial development. So overall, this construction occupation offer promising futures in Australia. Um, so moving ahead. So expected salaries. So for all the trade workers or the you know like construction industry, so the pay rate is pretty well comparing to other occupation. So in Australia, construction related occupation offers competitive salaries reflecting the demand and specialized skill required in industry. So carpenters and joiners earn median weekly wage of 1,432, uh, while painting and trade workers earn 1,237. Repairs have need in weekly earning of 1,401. Uh, so similarly, like these salaries reflect the robust demand um, and growth in Australia's construction industries, offering attractive financial reward for the skilled professionals. Moving ahead. So I've got this information from um, the Australian Bureau of Strategi uh, Statistics and Job Skill Australia 
trend data, the graph, um, quarterly employment trends in Australia construction industry, which is from 2020 to 2024, shows consistent growth, uh, including a notable increase of 36,300 uh, 36, workers in the year of leading up to February 2024. So despite the challenges like the COVID-2019 pandemic, which caused a temporary fluctuation, the industry has demonstrated resilience and remains a significant source of expanding employment opportunity in Australia. And the um, comparison of the industry ranking for like top industry, so construction industry ranks among the top five industries contributing to Australia's economic development. So it's substantial impact stem for ongoing infrastructure projects, residentials and commercial development and employment generation. So after completion of the study, definitely as for all the records and the database that we are getting, and even the invitations for a few visa, skill visa, immigration, they are prioritizing the um, students who have completed their construction courses and been working in the construction industry. So that's it from my part. So I'm going to pass on this floor to Mr. Parth Patel. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Prasam, sir, uh, for providing valuable information related to courses required to qualify under construction occupations. Hello, everyone. My name is Parth, and I am registered migration agent at OSIS Group. Me and my colleagues will be talking about how you can qualify to apply for permanent residency under various visa categories. Basically, you might have heard or you might have already seen challenges in construction industry occupations. As of now, the government is focusing so much on construction industry occupations. The government is promising that they want so many people under construction industry occupations as there is much more higher industry growth and also there is much more higher workforce shortage. So the government as of now, they are saying that there are so many occupations, construction industry occupations where they have been facing challenges, finding qualified people. And also there is a housing shortage. Recent, uh, recently, the government have announced about the budget and they have given a good amount of budget into housing and construction uh, uh, projects. So basically, according to Australian Bureau of Statistics, the construction industry is expected to grow by 2.4% in this year. And looking at that, government is also saying, looking at the shortages also, the government is saying that they are planning to build 1.2 million new homes in the next five years. And that's where for next five years, most likely there will be too much of shortages for these people. And that's where we strongly believe that construction industry occupations and the people who are qualified in such occupations will have much more higher possibility of getting permanent residency um, that you might have also noticed through recent invitation round for 189 visa where they have been inviting or they have invited so many um, construction industry occupations with much more lesser points and the government is also uh, trying to achieve approximately 90,000 additional skilled workers to meet this shortage and also to build this many houses and it's not just about the houses on top of the houses there are also other infrastructure will be built and that requires much more um, highly qualified skilled workers as such uh, basically prasamsa also have provided some insights on what occupations can possibly qualify under construction industry but just to give you around some idea uh, all the civil related engineers such as civil engineer structural engineer transport um, company uh, sorry transport engineer uh, structural engineer and then the draft persons, the trade occupations, architects, country servers are part of the construction industry. Uh, we'll be first talking about how possibly you can get a skills assessment under these occupations. Um, firstly, when we talk about occupations such as civil engineer, structural engineer, transport company, uh, sorry, transport engineer, um, civil draft person, uh, not uh, civil engineering draft person, these occupations are all assessed by Engineers Australia. Engineers Australia generally provide assessment under mainly two streams. First stream is where if your qualification is accredited under Australian Qualification Pathway or under Washington Accord or under Sydney or Dublin Accord. So there are four accredited pathways. If your qualification is accredited under one of the pathway, then you are eligible to apply for skill assessment. No extra requirement. You just have to score six bands in all of the four modules of English IELTS test um, or equivalent score in other acceptable uh, tests such as PT. Um, in some cases, you might get some exemptions. For an example, if you're holding passport from certain countries or if you have studied in Australia, you may be exempted to qualify for the English requirement. Um, if your qualification is not accredited, 
uh, under any of this pathway, then you'll have to go through CDR pathway that is called competency demonstration report. So you'll have to explain uh, your past practical experience through three project reports and you have to provide it in a format they have pre provided as an example, which is called CDR. So you'll have to prepare CDR reports and then based on that, they can assess your skills. The good thing with engineer socialize is that there is no requirement of any experience. Also, you can have qualification gained overseas and apply for skill assessment under either accredited pathway if your qualification is accredited. If not, you can still apply through CDR pathway. Um, no high English requirement as well, just six pence in each, which is the lowest requirement. Um, so that's about engineers Australia. If you'd like to get a skill assessment under construction project manager, um, also the draft person assessment or architectural draft person occupations are all assessed by Vetasys. So Vetasys is the biggest authority having highest number of occupations assessed. Um, basically for Vetasys, for any occupation, they want applicant to have relevant qualification plus minimum of one year of experience after the qualification. Um, for certain occupations, they have options there. They have options that if you don't have relevant qualification, but if you have more years of experience, they may be able to still give you a skill assessment. Also, in some occupations, they have options that if you have gained experience before your qualification, you can still get a skill assessment. It's just they, they will ask for more years of experience. But the standard requirement, if you talk about that is having a qualification relevant to the occupation at a relevant skill level. For example, if you look at civil draft person or architectural draft person for those occupations, this, that oh, those occupations are skill level two and for skill level two occupation, the qualification requirement is diploma or higher plus one year of experience you need after having the qualification. If we are looking at construction project manager, then usually you require a bachelor's level qualification and then the experience as such. So basically, qualification and then one year of experience is required in one year of experience you can have you could have worked for even 20 hours per week that is still acceptable also it must be paid experience and this one year of experience must have been gained within last five years then only you can apply for skill assessment so with Vetasys, if you don't have any experience you cannot apply for a skill assessment so the real challenge is finding a job in such occupations and that's where if you're a civil draft person if you don't have any experience we recommend you to go to engineer social which does not ask for experience but they ask you to prepare cdr if you have experience and if you don't want to prepare cdr then you can go with vetasis for an example but that option is only available for civil draft person for other occupation you only have a choice to go with vetasis for example if you go with construction project and manager um and then if we talk about any trade occupations such as bricklayer carpenter plumber Tyler, Glazier, Stone Mission, um, Guest Feeder, for example, any trade occupation like that, all those occupations are assessed by TRA, Trades Recognition Australia. For TRA, they have multiple pathways through which you can get a skills assessment. One of the very common pathways for people who have studied in Australia is Job Ready Program. In Job Ready Program, the applicant is required to have Australian qualification in the relevant field. So if you are, for example, a bricklayer, you need Certificate 3 in bricklaying, which is generally one year course. Once you complete that course, you are required to have one year of full time experience. So basically, if you have to work for one year and that is also on full time basis, you need full time work rights visa. And that's why most of the time people study for two years in Australia and then they get a temporary visa called 485 temporary graduate visa on that. They complete one year of a job ready program and then they apply for skill assessment. So basically in job ready program, you need Australian qualification in the relevant field. And after that, you have to work for one year. In one year, you have to complete 1725 hours of work and then you can get a skill assessment. So there are four stages in total. For first stage, you need qualification plus 360 hours of experience. Then you can apply for a provisional skill assessment. Once you get the positive outcome for the provisional skill assessment, then you can go for the job ready employment registration. So you have to register your employer. You have to tell TRA that I'm going to work with this employer. Basically, TRA is going to check whether this employer has sufficient um, technologies or you or uh, the instruments to perform the work and you can get a proper training there. So basically then after your job ready program starts one year you have to work and then you can get a skill assessment. Third step is where they will the TRA assessor will come to your place work at your workplace and they will check whether you are um, having the relevant skills. You are able to perform the tasks whether you have a technical skills as such. And lastly, once you complete your one year experience, you can get a skill assessment. So that is basically a job ready program. One year of experience is required post qualification. That's one way. Second option is for the people who have 
Australian qualification gained by studying in Australia or gained by RPL recognized prior learning. So if you have a certificate gained in Australia, then you have three years of experience, then you can apply for a skill assessment under OSA program, OSA skills assessment program or under MSA program, which is called migration skill assessment program. So two pathways in that case, if there are again some extra requirements in that. So basically, if you're holding passport from certain countries, you have to get a skill assessment from OSEP program. And if you're not holding passport from such countries, so there are there is a list of occupations, a list of occupation and corresponding to that, there is a list of countries. So if your occupation and your country is mentioned there, then basically you have to go through OSEP program. If your occupation is not mentioned there in that list, then you have to go through MSA program, something like this. Uh, but basically for both of the program, the requirement is you need qualification plus three years of experience in the relevant field. That three years of experience must be full time. And out of three years, at least one year of experience must have been gained within last three years. If we have that, then you can qualify for the skills assessment. Um, so basically that are the two pathways through which you can get a skill assessment. Job ready program is comparatively um, you can say that it's like in quick turnaround time, you can finish it within two years of time if you have a qualification plus one year experience. Um, and probably if you would like to go with the other pathway, then you need qualification plus three years of experience. There's another pathway where if you don't have qualification um, in Australia, then you can have a skills assessment still with overseas qualification, still three years of experience required. In trade occupation, the good thing is also that if you don't have a qualification, you can still get a skill assessment with five years of experience. So that is another option. Uh, basically, you need more years of experience to get a skill assessment then. So three pathways in TRA job ready program and in migration skill assessment with three years or five years of experience. Either you go with OSEP program, OSEP skill assessment, offshore skill assessment program or the MSS skill assessment program. Other than that, other occupations are architect that assessment is done by AACA and they usually want a master's degree which is accredited by um, them or if it is not accredited then you'll have to submit your portfolio and then you can apply if they see that okay you had studied sufficient content um, which is equivalent to Australian qualification accredited qualification they can still give you a positive assessment if you go with quantity server occupation um, for that you need Australian qualification which is accredited by them the skill assessment authority A AIQS um, and you need one year of experience after the qualification if your qualification is not accredited by them then you need basically two years of experience so if you have that then you can get a skill assessment basically this is just quick run run around uh, how you can get a skill assessment which is a kind of a must requirement for most of the skilled visas only exemption is if you go for 482 visa leading to 186 visa we'll talk more about visas then only skill assessment is not a must but otherwise in all other categories any all other visa categories skills assessment is a must and that's why we were talking about this but if you have any other queries at the end of the session we'll have a q and a session and then we'll talk about that more um, about the visa options, once you have a skills assessment, you can possibly look at 190 visa, which is a state sponsored visa, which is part of general skilled migration. It is a points tested visa and you have to meet the state sponsorship criteria plus the minimum criteria set under the GSM program, which is having 65 points, six bands in each in English and um, having a skills assessment for certain people who are holding passport from certain countries like UK, USA, Canada, Ireland, New Zealand, they don't have to score six points in each just to meet the minimum criteria. But if they need more points, they still have to do the English test. The 491, that is also a state sponsored visa, but it's not a straight away permanent residency. It's a pathway to permanent residency. So you get five years of visa, you stay in regional area for three years, work in regional area, three years after you can qualify for permanent residency under 191 visa. That is also a general skilled migration uh, visa and then points tested visa you have to still meet the points criteria apart from that the 189 visa is called skilled independent visa that means independently you are applying for PR you are not required to take help of any state government or any employer or possibly any relative and you can still qualify for 189 visa um, that is also a points tested visa so you have to meet the minimum 65 points requirement however the person having higher points will be selected first for state sponsored visas like 190 and 491 it's about meeting the state state's criteria if state would like to sponsor you with even minimum points it is possible to do so um, lastly 491 there is another option for 491 uh, family sponsored visa if you have a relative in australia who is uh, living in regional area 
up to first cousin can sponsor you so if you have a relative like that you may still go for 491 family sponsorship it is very similar to 189 visa um, in terms that the selection will be made based on the points higher the points higher the possibility however it's not a straight away permanent residency it is like 491 so you have to stay for three years in regional area work in regional area and then you can apply for permanent residency uh, lastly the 186 visa it's the employer sponsored visa for employer sponsored visa you need an employer who is willing to sponsor you for 186 visa there are two ways to get permanent residency first option is you straight away apply for 186 that is called a direct entry stream for 186 direct entry you need three years of full-time experience in the relevant field and full-time means 38 hours per week for 190 491 and 180 visa if you have worked for 20 hours per week you can still get points but for 186 visa you need full-time employment either full-time or equivalent part-time equivalent part-time means if you have six years part-time experience you can still qualify but basically if you have three years of full-time experience if you have six months in each competent english and if you have a skills assessment you can apply for 186 under direct entry if your employer is willing to sponsor you if they can prove that they have a shortage and they are not able to fulfill that shortage through locals qualified people as such then they may be able to sponsor you the other pathway for 186 is called transition stream trt stream in that stream you have to first get 482 visa which is a temporary employer sponsored visa which is known as temporary skill shortage visa tss for that visa you have to have at least two years of experience plus qualification then employer may be able to sponsor you if they sponsor you on that 482 visa you work with the same employer for two years and then you can apply for 186 visa the good thing with going for 482 to 186 is in case if you're not meeting the skill assessment criteria you may still be able to apply for 482 which can lead to 186 and in that case skill assessment is not a must criteria for certain occupations mainly the trade occupations skills assessment is still required however there are still some exemptions provided by the government so if you have studied for example in australia then you get exemption things like that so certain applicants still get exemption if you're applying for 186 visa under transition stream some people have a mandatory criteria to meet even if they would like to go from 482 to 186 for direct entry it's must requirement so for 190 491 189 and 186 direct entry skill assessment is a must criteria and that's where we have talked about what how you can get a skills assessment uh, just a quick rundown how the government has selected people under 118 category in the recent round so there was a there there was an invitation round happened on 13th of june where the government have selected somewhere around 5200 applicants under 189 category that includes all the occupations not just the construction occupations the government have recently uh, released the data basically this data is um, derived from the government uh, data itself but the government does not provide accurate details about how many people have been invited it's just that based on our statistics our experience and also um, how government have invited in past based on that we have derived how many invitations they have given but that number is not accurate uh, but should be somewhat close by uh, so basically if you look at any professional occupations such as architect or civil engineer or a transport engineer structural engineer or a construction project manager they, those are all skilled uh, sorry pro professional occupations or managerial professional uh, managerial occupations for those occupations we have seen that the cutoff was 85 um, and then the number of invitations are also shown over here for trade occupations the government have invited with much more lesser points most of the occupations were invited with just 65 points such as brick clear if you see 70 applicants close to 70 applicants were invited carpenters there were so many people so with five somewhere around 560 people were invited with 65 points uh, glazier as you see not many people qualify under glazier so that's why you can see the numbers are also very less um wall floor tiler we have seen 70 points what was the cutoff only for that occupation for other occupations it was just 65 so many painters were invited so painters and carpenters we have seen so many invites but basically for any trade occupation the cutoff was somewhere around 65 to 70 we also saw some invites under cabinet maker with 65 points guest feeder and then plumber stone mason so all those were with 65 points were invited that's basically for 189 but this round if, if you have seen in last two years you might not have seen invites under this occupation so the last round before this where they have selected such occupations was in december 2022 where the government have invited so many people i think 35,000 people were invited in under 189 category 
uh, at that time they selected people with 65 points or higher points since then there was no invitation round but basically approximately a month back when we had a uh, we had attended one workshop with the department of uh, home affairs representatives that's where the government was saying that we would like to focus on construction industry occupations and after that we also saw the effect that in this round they have invited firstly if you have also noticed when they started this invitation round on 13th of june initially they started giving invites for construction occupations and after that they started inviting other occupations like probably it or engineering or accounting or any other occupations but initially they started with these occupations and also if you have seen cut off only for such occupations were much more lesser for other occupations it was much more higher um, so basically that is just a start that's what we are um, uh, thinking but in the upcoming years as the government have plans to build 1.2 million new homes plus many more infrastructure projects uh, um, in the coming five years 10 years of time so i think if you are still planning to start a course in this occupation if you're planning to develop a career in this i think it is very it will be very wise decision um, in terms of both making a career and in terms of getting even permanent residency. Uh, coming to the state uh, sponsorship requirements. So I'll be covering about Victoria, South Australia, Tasmania, and then my, I'll be passing it to my colleagues. They'll be talking about the other states. So if we look at Victoria, Victorian, Victorian state government, uh, they are saying that we are giving priority to infrastructure industry occupation. So that is one good thing. Um, they don't give priority to all the occupation. They have six, seven industries where they are giving priority. So one of the industries construction industry, which is good. The requirements for 190 state nomination is that you must be living in Victoria for how long? No requirement like that. So if you moved from some other state to Victoria, even today, you can qualify for Victoria state nomination. Um, for 491, the requirement is you must be living and working in regional Victoria that is outside of Melbourne some out outer regionals of uh, outer areas of melbourne are still regional for an example pakenham south morang if you have heard about that is regional um, so requirement for 491 is you must be living in those regional areas outside of melbourne and uh, you must be working in regional victoria now for the working the requirement is not that you must be working in the same field if you're working in any other occupation which is skill level one two or three skill level one occupations are occupations which are mainly the professional and senior managerial positions skill level two means bit lower level managers like restaurant manager hotel manager customer service manager store manager are all level two and the skill level three occupations are occupations such as trade occupations carpenter motor mechanic painter all those are skill level three occupations so basically if you are a civil engineer and if you are working as a cook for an example or as a carpenter for an example in regional victoria you can still qualify even though your occupation is totally different as long as it is skill level one two three occupation how long you have to be working in regional no requirement so if you have started your job you can still qualify it's just that when they select you they ask you to provide one month of pay slip so probably if you'd like to say you may say that one month is the requirement but actually it's not one month requirement because if you apply today to Victoria saying I'm living and working in regional Victoria, it's not like it's guaranteed that next day you will be invited. By the time they invite you, it might be one month. So you might have pay slips at that time and you can submit the application that way. Um, this is just a minimum criteria. But with this minimum criteria, as you may understand, pretty much everyone living in Victoria, international candidates will qualify for state uh, nomination. And they don't have that much of quota to sponsor uh, pe that many people. you know. So basically, they will be selecting people based on certain factors. Mainly we have seen they have been inviting people based on your salary. If you're earning more than $100,000, that's much more higher priority. Second priority they look at is whether you have a skilled partner. That means your partner have a skill assessment plus six each, you get a priority. If your partner does not have a skill assessment but have six each, at least you still get a half priority in a way. Thirdly, they look at whether you have scored superior in English. And then lastly, they look at whether you have good years of experience in the relevant field. So these are the four priority att attributes we have seen. They are focusing much more. Apart from that, they also look at your qualification um, and probably your age and things like that. But mainly, these are the four factors we have seen based on which they have been inviting. Um, we have seen invitations under all the um, occupations um, under 491 category. For 190 category, we have not seen much invites under trade occupation. Only 
uh, one or two occupations like glazier we have seen invites in the whole financial year this this current financial year from Victoria state government because they have mentioned that for trade occupation they are not going to invite but still somehow glazier was invited we got some people uh, but basically otherwise for 190 trade people they were not selecting so it's good that government have conducted 189 rounds so these trade people got invited but um, otherwise, 491, they have been inviting under all the occupations. So that is how Victor and state government, they have been sponsoring. South Australian state government, they have multiple pathways. They select people based on um, their skills. But basically, they have four pathways. First pathways for people who have been studying there. Second pathways for people who have been living and working there. And third pathways for people who are highly talented. And last pathways for the people who are offshore. For first three pathways, that is, if you have studied there, if you have worked there, or if you have a high talent, then you can qualify. But then for that, you have to apply for expression of interest and ROI application both. Based on that, they will select for offshore applicants. They just have to apply for expression of interest EUI and based on the skills, they will select you. Basic criteria for graduate stream is that you must have studied in South Australia for one year and then you have worked for six months at least in the same field. Now for the same field, this is that if you work in any occupation which has the same first two occupation uh, ENSCO code, that is still acceptable. That means, for an example, um, if we look at a civil engineer occupation, if that has an occupation code starting from, for an example, 2-2, two, two, if you are working in any occupation which has occupation code starting from 2-2, two, two, all occupations as such will be considered relevant. So uh, basically, if you are working in any engineering field, if you are a civil engineer, like you have a skill assessment in civil engineering, but if you are working as a mechanical engineer or any other engineering role, that is still considered as relevant, for an example. Um, for living and working in South Australia, for example, for the people who study in some other state and move to South Australia, they have a requirement to stay there for one year and work there for six months in the same field, which is same field means first two digits of an ENSCO code must be similar. Um, so that's about South Australian state nomination criteria. We have seen invites under pretty much most of the occupations. It's just that they look at higher skills. They are looking at for how long you've been staying there, working there. So multiple factors they look at. They are not publicly, uh, publicly saying that on what factors they've been selecting, but we have seen mainly more years of experience than they have been inviting. Lastly, if you look at Tasmania, they have again multiple streams. They have streams such as if you have been studying there for some time, if you have been working there for some time, if you have been living there for some time, if you are doing a business there, if you uh, are applying from offshore. So five, six categories they have. Basically for graduates category for 190 visa, they want people who have studied for two years in their state can qualify. For 491, they want people who have studied for one year in their state can qualify under graduate stream. For work experience category, they want people who have worked for six months in the same field. And considering your occupation is on their list, work work for even 20 hours per week, then you can qualify. If you work for three months in the same field, then they want uh, just three months if you are applying under 491 category. Then they have a uh, established resident pathway. That's where if you have stayed there for three years for 190 and two years if you have stayed in Tasmania for 491, you can qualify. Something like this. There are some additional criteria as well, but we are not going into that deep for now. Once you are meeting the minimum criteria, then they have a ROI process, registration of interest process, where they have some priority factors like Victoria, we were discussing. So um, based on the priority attributes, they give you gold pass or a green pass or an orange pass. Based on that, you can make a submission for a state nomination. If you are qualifying under the gold pass category, if you have factors like that, mainly if you are working in the same field in Tasmania, then you will be automatically invited as soon as you submit your ROI. So you can straight away apply for state nomination. If you are qualifying under the green pass, you need two, three factors at least to get invited. And then generally this is it will be probably taking somewhere around six months to get selected, depending on how many people are waiting, how many people are meeting green pass, gold pass, something like this. If you are qualifying under just orange pass category, then you pretty much need more than five factors to be, um, I mean, having good chances of getting invited. Otherwise, you might have to keep waiting, working on other factors. But basically, more the priority attributes you have, higher the possibility. Most important target for them is people working in the same field will be invited. So basically, that's pretty much it about um, these three states. My colleague now, Bhomik, will be talking about West Northwest state nomination uh, requirements and also the ACT state nomination criteria. Thank you. Passing it to Bhomik. Perfect, Par. Perfect. Super good. Thank you. Thank you so much for passing it to me and giving such great information to uh, all these people who are currently uh, in our live session.
Uh, good afternoon uh, to those who are in Eastern States and uh, of course, good morning to those who are in Western Australia. My name is Bhomik. My introduction has already been given by my colleague. So of course, I won't take much of time to um, give you again the same information. But yeah, I'll straight jump on the uh, part, which is, uh, of course, you all are waiting for. Um, I'm in Western Australia and uh, I'm going to talk about the state migration plan of Western Australia. So first of all, before uh, I proceed with uh, statistics, I would like to give you a little bit of information that the Western Australia has been one of the most popular state for the skilled migration. And Western Australia has released great number of invitations over the past three years of time. And most of the people have been advantage uh, throughout these three years of time who were aiming to apply for the skilled visa. Now, coming to the point, the WS State Migration Plan is divided in three different categories. The first category is for those people who are applying under the general stream uh, schedule one criteria. Now, the general stream schedule one criteria is for those people who are applying under the, um, under the uh, uh, health related occupations which is not the topic for today, but I'm still covering a little bit so that you guys can have an idea. Uh, the second category is for those people who are currently living in Australia, irrespective of the uh, location in Australia, as long as they are in Australia and their occupation is in demand, they can apply through a Schedule 2. The third one is for those who are graduated from Western Australia and um, have achieved high level of qualification, which is, of course, PhD, master's and uh, bachelor's and bachelor's with honors degree. The other category they have is for the graduate stream, which is only uh, primarily focused on the vocational level qualification, which is associate degree, advanced diploma, uh, diploma, certificate three and four. Right. So now let's talk about the construction related uh, um, occupations. Now, the best part is that in last not last actually in fact the current financial year which is uh, we still have four more days to go now in this current financial year western australia has promoted maximum number of uh, um, invitations for the construction only so whether they are from a general category whether they are from the graduate category whether they are from the vocational category irrespective W state has invited maximum number of people from the construction industry. And in the first invitation round itself, uh, they've released about 487 number of uh, invites. And out of that, uh, if I would give you a stats that would give you a bit of more information on it, which is uh, so construction related architect, architectural draft person, bricklayer, uh, carpenter, civil engineer, civil draft person, civil technician, construction project manager uh, and the quantity surveyor. Of course, there are some more which is a uh, solid pressurer and uh, surveyor and all not. However, um, the best part is that all the innovations that has happened, the cutoff was somewhere around 75, 80, which is in my opinion is very much achievable for most of the people who are in Australia. Now, the only catching part here is that of course, as I say, that WA state has been inviting people who are currently living in Australia. However, in this particular invitation round, highly focused on the construction, they have only and only invited people who are who were currently living in Western Australia. So for those people who were not living in Western Australia, even though they had higher points than the people who are uh, who were living in Western Australia, they were still not invited. So, of course, uh, you guys can uh, understand this, that what is the importance of being in Western Australia in order to be invited uh, in, a, in a priority session, right? So that's the first part. The second part is for those people, of course, uh, those who have been graduated from Western Australia. Well, this was more of a lottery for those who graduated from Western Australia and have achieved a high level of qualification. And of course, if they have uh, such occupations uh, belonging to construction industry like civil draft person, civil engineer, architect, or landscape architect, or a surveyor, right? They were all invited below 70, 75 points max. So, uh, of course, uh, this was one of the fantastic uh, 
round for those people who were belonging to construction industry. And then not last but the least, of course, those people who were qualifying from the vocational level qualification and uh, the diploma level, of course, uh, qualification, which is uh, certificate three diploma in uh, uh, construction um, or sorry, the advanced diploma of civil engineering. Um, those people mostly qualified for uh, the trade occupations like a bricklayer, carpenter or civil draft person, right? They were all invited within the 65 points. So technically they were invited with the 65 points minimum. Now, in that 65 points, 60 points from their own for a 190 and five from the state. So technically, that's how they made 65. So you can imagine that the person who was only holding 60 points on his own and five points from the state and meeting all the other criteria of the state government was invited. So, of course, this is uh, one of the most uh, you know interesting facts that we have come across. Now, from there onward, of course, the gradually the next round has moved forward and the number of invites has significantly gone about five times more. So, as I say, the first round was with 487. The second round has gone to up to 2005. That was the biggest invitation round. And in that second invitation round, uh, majority. So about again, the same thing. About 50% or more invitations has come through for construction. Now, th that was one of the most, uh, you know, uh, interesting um, facts. We all were so happy. And of course, uh, you all were, um, um, must be, you know, so grateful for that part. Now, in that round, of course, we have seen a lot of challenges because as soon as the first round has gone through, people have got a lot of ideas and then they have decided that, okay, well, you know, this is a more happening spot. So a lot of migration happened in the transition and people have relocated to Western Australia, updated their EOIs with the current location in Western Australia. And of course, they were all aiming to be invited. So in that invitation round, if I would talk about, especially for example, in the general stream, for those people who were relocated from another state to Western Australia, um, and uh, they wanted to be invited for that. Well, for example, Carpenter. Now, Carpenter all of a sudden um, has gone um, down to 65 points. Now, the person who was living in Western Australia, even though he did not study in Western Australia, was invited with 65 points. Whereas the person who was not living in Western Australia, but still he was qualified for, or she was qualified for as a Carpenter, but living in another state, was invited with the 90 points. So you can see the difference, guys, right? So the person who was living in Western Australia was invited with the 65 points, whereas the person who was living in the state was invited with the 90 points. So see the drastic, uh, you know, uh, change in the, in, the, in the point test, right? So of course, the advantage is to be in Western Australia in order to be invited. But of course, if you're not living there, it doesn't mean that you are not qualified for it. But again, it's just that you have to go through more challenges and, and more, of a, uh, more of a competitive area, right? So in the same situation, if I would talk about a civil engineering draft person, now this is something very, very interesting. So when we talk about civil engineering draft person, as, as Parth has already discussed, the entire PR pathway of a civil draft person, the skill assessment, um, and the qualification, and everything pretty much, right? Now see, the civil engineering draft person doesn't have to be, for example, only the Australian qualified people, right? Of course, there are so many people who are overseas. So in this invitation round, we have come across a very interesting facts where people were invited with 90 points, even though they are living in overseas. Now that's something, um, you know, uh, that's something we, we did not expect at all to happen. But of course it happened. So you can understand, guys, that how department is focused on the construction part, right? They are heavily focusing on this either way, either they are uh, looking for people who are in Australia or overseas, as long as the people who are skillful and coming from the industry, of course, this is all the department is looking for at this point of time. Now, as I said, 60% of the invites from the W state has gone towards the construction industry, which is, of course, far bigger than any other state right now. So, as I said, the W state is completely focusing on this construction industry and if you are considering yourself uh, from this industry or uh, aiming to be invited from this industry, then of course you should closely observe the migration plan and the requirement of Western Australia for the skill visa 491 and of course uh, the 190. 
um, and that will definitely give you a lot of idea uh, in which way you want to um, you know make a, make a next move uh, towards your migration plan. Now, if I would go to the last innovation round, of course, that was the last innovation round because, of course, the Department of Home Affairs did not give a lot of uh, number of uh, quota uh, in the current financial year. Therefore, we did not have many rounds. But the last innovation round, which happened in November 2023, and the WS state has invited about 1,200 people in total. Now, in that last innovation round, uh, if I would understand the facts, then the innovation round was a bit mixed. So they invited pretty much uh, people from health and then some other general occupations like accountant and the hospitality related. And of course, they have covered some occupations from the construction again uh, to maintain the consistency. And it has come to that point that uh, a lot of people were invited. But then by then, the competition has gone a bit more uh, aggressive. And of course, a lot of people have migrated uh, to Western Australia, updated their UI. So the points pretty much got fluctuated. So, so the same thing what we have seen in the last innovation round where people were invited with the 65 points, the same, same thing has gone up to somewhere around 75, 80 points. So of course, see, this is what it is, right? Uh, you have to understand when to make a move and how fast to make a, make a move. So you can't, you can't take uh, a long time to, to define where you would like to relocate and, and, um, sil, uh, um, and secure your uh, uh, skill migration. So that's from me for the Western Australia. And of course, see, the Western Australian state migration plan has been one of the most consistent at the same time has been one of the most favorable in terms of uh, the requirement. Because for, for a 491 visa, for example, the W state is literally not looking for anything other than your minimum points, uh, the expression of interest, and then just be in a queue with an EOI. There is no ROI system in Western Australia. So if you are in Western Australia, have submitted your UI, you can possibly be invited if you're meeting the threshold requirement. And if you're invited, you don't really have to look for a kind of a job offer letter or any other for the specific requirement of the employment. Whereas in a 190, yes, there is an advanced requirement, which is a six month of job offer letter if you're invited, but that is exempted for the construction related occupation. So that is also something that you don't have to worry about. But of course, if you are working in the field, then you will be more um, advantage uh, through the invitations, right? Other than that, uh, for the people who are graduated from Western Australia, living in Western Australia, have the occupation from construction industry, they literally do not require any experience or any um, job offer letter. Uh, either way, whether it is 491 or 190. So it's pretty standard, pretty simple, and uh, more achievable, uh, I would say, compared to any other state. So that's from uh, Western Australia. Now, of course, I'll I'll uh, I'll cover all the questions if you have any uh, from Western Australia or uh, any part of Australia uh, in in the question answer session. But in the meantime, I'll just move forward with the uh, ACT. Of course, ACT is not very wide, very big. Uh, so I'll just quickly run through, and then uh, we'll go to the next session where my colleague will help you with the New South Wales part. So, for example, in ACT, ACT, of course, uh, ACT also has uh, two uh, criteria. I mean, uh, sorry, two migration pathway. One is for 190 and the second one is for 491. Now, let's start with the 491. So, ACT has got uh, the pathway uh, for those people who are currently living in ACT and meeting the matrix UI. The second pathway is for the small business owner. Of course, uh, the people who are operating business in um, ACT from longer than three months. And the third one is, of course, for those who are offshore. Now, for offshore candidate, I would say that it's very, very challenging for the people who are offshore and aiming to be migrated through ACT because ACT does not have a lot of uh, uh, quota and they don't really invite many people from offshore unless they are coming from a very super high ranking uh, points and a very specific occupation. The last one is for the people who are graduated from ACT and have done either a PhD or a research qualification. So that's for the 491. And the 190, pretty much similar situation. Um, they are also considering people who are currently living in uh, living or working in ACT. Um, the minimum working hours is somewhere around 30 hours a week. And the minimum experience they're looking at is somewhere around 26 weeks, which is uh, six months. Of course, you also have to go through a normal UI process. At the same time, there are uh, Canberra metrics. And then the second category they have is a small business owner. The third category is again offshore 
and the fourth one is for a PhD. So in both cases, it's the requirement is pretty much same, um, but the only challenge here is uh, the duration. So for 491, the duration is a bit smaller compared to 490, but the rest of the requirement is very much same. And uh, the innovation hierarchy is also kind of uh, uh, kind of designed in a way that Canberra is not releasing many number of invites compared to other states because of having a small number of quota. So Canberra is not very popular uh, place right now, but of course, uh, in, in this coming financial year, uh, every state is having, going to have a different number of quotas. So, uh, we will be able to get some more idea in which state you will be having more prospect for the construction. But other than that, I think uh, mostly we mostly we have covered uh, the information for the skilled visa um, through 190 or a 491. And as I say that I have given more information on the Western Australia part because I'm currently in Western Australia and I've got a very much clear understanding of the statistics of Western Australia. But yeah, um, uh, from here onward, I'll uh, invite my colleague um, to give you a bit more information for uh, New South Wales. And then of course, from there onward, we'll move to the question answer session and we'll be able to assist you with the rest of the part. So Sanjeev, uh, I'll hand over to you. And uh, I would like to uh, request you to please take it from here. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Vamik. Good afternoon, everybody. I will be briefly covering uh, state nomination criteria for New South Wales and recent invitation rounds, and also state nomination criteria for Queensland and recent invitation rounds. Uh, in terms of uh, NSW, New South Wales has for 190, if you need to be living in New South Wales for six months in order to be eligible for 190 pathway. NSW also accepts applications from offshore applicants. Uh, for that, you need to be living offshore for six months as well. Uh, NSW uh, this year came up with the priority sectors as compared to our different lists for uh, 190 and 491. And infrastructure was one of the priority sectors which was on the list of NSW. And NSW has been actively inviting applicants in uh, construction and infrastructure throughout the year. Uh, NSW for 491, there are two pathways. There is pathway one for which you need to be living in NSW for uh, three months. And there is pathway one in NSW. For pathway one, uh, you need to be living and working in regional NSW for six months. The criteria used to be 12 months, but it recently has been uh, changed. And now any applicant who is living and working in regional NSW for six months, they can lodge the nomination in NSW pathway 1491. This, there is more certainty in this pathway. You can be working in your closed related occupation and any uh, your own occupation or a closed related occupation. Minimum point score you need 65. Yeah, if you're working full time in your nominated occupation, uh, you need to be earning $70,000 a year or your income can be proportionately on pro rata basis if you're working part time. You only need to work with one employer for the last six months in order to be eligible. Few more things you need to ensure that your work experience has to be after the deem date. And uh, deem date means that once you got your skill assessment and your work experience has to be after that. And uh, work experience has to be mentioned on your UI. So those few things uh, which application should need to take care. In terms of invitations, uh, NSW has been inviting applicants with higher points, higher English. Most applicants they were inviting with superior English and at the same time, they were inviting applicants with some work experience, one or two years work experience. NSW has invited construction project managers for 491 at 95 points where they have proficient English. One occupation urban and regional planner was very popular throughout the year and applicants with 75 points or above were getting invited with proficient English. They Even the uh, urban and regional planners were getting invited without any work experience. Uh, architectural technicians were also got invitations for 190. They were invited at 90 points with superior English and applicants had two years work experience. If we see in terms of New South Wales, they were mostly focused on professional occupations in uh, 
uh, construction industry. We haven't seen a lot of uh, interest in terms of trade occupations during the year, but in the last recent round happened last month, where we have seen NSW invited carpenters, bricklayers, painters, uh, and they got invitations for 190 at minimum uh, 65 points. So in terms of uh, Queensland, uh, Queensland's migration program for the current year has been currently closed on 10th of May, and they had 1,550 places combined for 190 and 491, but they had around 40,000 EOIs, the applicants who were willing to be invited for those pathways. So it was more competitive, but in terms of construction, Queensland was had a uh, similar approach like Western Australia. They have been very actively inviting applicants in uh, in construction, uh, construction industry. Queensland has four different pathways in terms to invite applicants. First is uh, skilled workers will uh, living and working in Queensland. Uh, in order to be eligible for this pathway, apart from home affairs requirement, which is minimum 65 points, uh, skill assessment applicant has to be under 45. You need to meet additional uh, requirements from the state. Uh, you need to have 75 points or higher, including the state for um, professional occupations. For trade occupation, the requirement for 190 was 70 points. And applicants need to be living in uh, Queensland and working 30 hours a week in the nominated occupation or closely related occupation for the last three months. And they need to provide a 12 months employment contract on for the ongoing employment as part of the nomination. For 491, the point score, the applicants got invited at 65 point itself and the applicants needs to be living and working in regional Queensland. There wasn't no minimum period requirement, but you need to work full time minimum 30 hours a week. And applicant had to provide a six month job contract in order to be eligible in uh, Queensland's uh, skilled workers living in Queensland pathway. Now, in terms of construction, uh, as I mentioned earlier, they have been very actively inviting applicants, uh, all the occupations, carpenters, bricklayers, uh, painters, and decorators. They have been inviting for 190 those occupations starting from 70 points. Even applicants with competent English six each in IELTS or PT were getting inviting, invited during the invitation rounds. The one difference between Queensland and NSW we have observed that NSW was more focused on professional occupations, whereas uh, Queensland was more focused on uh, trade occupations. So they also uh, were inv uh, inviting applicants in the uh, offshore pathway in order to be eligible for uh, in Queensland offshore pathway. You need uh, you need an occupation in Queensland occupation list, and you need it to meet a minimum work experience requirement against the uh, against the that pathway in your occupation. The graduates of Queensland University now trades occupations are not eligible under this pathway. Only the professional occupations are eligible. Uh, you need minimum seventy five points for one ninety and sixty five points for four nine one to be eligible, and uh, you need to be living in Queensland anywhere in Queensland for 190 and in regional Queensland for 491. And you need to complete your 100% of your study in Queensland in the last two years to be eligible for this pathway. Uh, but trades occupations in construction, they were not eligible. Uh, this pathway only includes bachelor's, master's and PhD applicants. Uh, Queensland also has another pathway for small business owners. Uh, they have two pathways. Uh, one in pathway, you need to be, you need to invest hundred thousand dollars in the uh, business, and you need to run that business for six months. Uh, you need to be working full time, minimum thirty hours, and that business needs to operate in uh, regional NSW. You need to have hundred uh, percent ownership of that business. There is a pathway too for that. Uh, you can do a startup business. You need to be running that business for two years and uh, total turnover of that business in the last 12 months has to be 200,000. You need to employ one uh, one Australian uh, citizen or permanent resident, minimum 20 hours a week in that business. You can employ two people, 10 hours each in the business. Now, in to be eligible in a uh, small business owner pathway, uh, all the occupations in uh, Queensland's skilled occupation list are eligible and uh, applicants were getting invited at minimum 65 points. So that's all from me uh, for NSW in Queensland.
uh, I would like to thank each and everyone who has joined in today. I would also like to thank all my presenters today. Thank you so much for uh, giving out time and sending all your information to all our clients. Thank you so much. Have a thank great you, day. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. And all the best. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank <laughs> you.